the whole city series Cigars and citrus sevens, black cement threes, fours The hairs and bread elevens No doubt that I'll be wearing some fire at any sighting With these door and becker fives you can see me in any lighting It's exciting, I'll be flexing to the coldest degree What's up everybody, it's Sneakerhead M Checks I got the 2024 Olive 9 scheduled to release Saturday, November 16th So as usual, we're going to take a close detail to look at the shoe from all angles I also have the most recent retro from 2012 So I'll be comparing the two throughout the video and we'll discuss all the differences after that i'm gonna share my opinion on these which pair i like better and then i'm gonna talk about release predictions reselling predictions and all that stuff so let's get right to it suede feels nice and smooth so does the leather leather feels really nice on the 2012 release it was mad tough right here but you can see it's real real soft and they bought the thick laces back if you look at the last retro from 2012 you could tell even from here that the laces on these are significantly thicker the tongue on these is thicker as well at least it seems to be but it's not like a big difference The leather feels great, but the downside about it is it does have that wrinkly texture on some parts. You can see it's real heavy up here. The other shoe's not as bad, but that still is a concern. Like, see over here, it has little wrinkles, but honestly, this is fine. This over here, yeah, I don't, I don't really like that. And I don't know why this part is so brown, you know, when it's supposed to be olive. It's not the first time we've seen that. I mean, even the 2012 release does look pretty brown. They're getting more brown and brown as they <laughs> retro them. So, I don't know what that's about, but we'll talk a little bit more about it later. Here's the inner side. Now, this part right here kind of looks a little bit gray right now. It's really just because of the lighting, but best believe it is black, so nothing to worry about. And you can't help but notice the new shape that they put on these. Most specifically, this part right here, you see it's a really deep cut, a deeper cut than we've ever seen on a pair of Jordan 9s before. And I'm not really sure why they did that, because I wouldn't say the OGs had a cut that deep. So, I don't know. I'm not really a fan of it, but I feel like once you unlace them and put them on foot, I don't think it's really going to show too much. Or if it does, it won't be a big deal, but we'll see in a few when I put them on feet. Here's the back. Yeah, I'm sorry, these are way too brown. Like they really don't look bad, but like I'm just looking at this. This 23 almost looks gold. And I know that's really because of the light, but damn, like. And these see these is like a different type of brown. Like these are brown too, don't get it twisted, but this is like brown, this is like lighter brown, like I thought these was olives. They killing me with that, but <laughs> here's the back. Here's the inside of the shoe. Tag on the back of the tongue like the OG. All black interior. Well, is this black? Because I like to think this is an all black interior, but this, this looks like a off black almost. <laughs> I don't know what that's about, but insoles are definitely black, and they got the red Nike Air logo. Really love the Jordan 9 outsole. It's one of my favorites. OG style box. I really hate this flimsy ass box, but the OGs did come in it. I mean, I don't hate it, but like, it's just so flimsy and inconvenient to stack. I don't really like it, but yeah, this is what the original olives came in. I don't have the original olive nines, but here are my original charcoals. And as you can see, the boxes are a lot of like, not exactly, you see the, the labels obviously a little different, but you know, the lid is the same, the bottom color is the same. And this is also mad flimsy. And I'm sure at this point, y'all want to see the shoes. They're very crumbled, so. Yeah, but enough about these. We'll, we'll we'll show more of these when the 
charcoal knives we release. But yeah, take the lid off, the regular degular inside, got that trash bag plastic inside, and here's the box label. Air Jordan 9 Retro in black, true red, and light olive. Here's a quick all around view of the shoe. All right, now let's see what they look on feet. I've been getting money since a youngin', so this ain't nothing new. I know you niggas inexperienced. Always hot like I'm in Denver. I'll be ballin' like the Joker, but don't joke about the paper. That shit serious. She know I'm the most valuable nigga that she fucking talk about the dick so much her friends curious. Scooped as soon as she got single, got her moving on fast. Now her ex done heard about it, then he furious. Damn, I'm just fucking with her for the moment. You can keep straight. So in comparison to the 2012 pair, the 2024 release has much better materials, thicker laces, a different shape, a slightly different shade of olive or brown and nike air on the insole as opposed to a jump man now for those of you who have the 2012 pair already and are wondering if it's really like necessary for you to get these it's definitely a matter of preference obviously but i would say not really well not now at least i mean at some point you will the 2012 pair is now 12 years old and that's fine for now but i know as time goes on this midsole is going to start to deteriorate and will crumble to the point where these aren't going to be wearable anymore the time that takes is going to vary pair to pair depending on how the pair has been kept over the years but jordan eyes do not last forever yeah, I just saw my OG charcoal. <laughs> so for that reason, you will eventually need the new pair. But besides that, it really comes down to how detail-oriented you are. Because really, all the differences are pretty minor. To me, personally, I think I like the 2024 pair better. But that's just because I'm a detail-oriented person. The thicker laces, the better leather, like, that kind of stuff matters to me. So yeah, if you aren't moved as much by those minor things and want to save yourself a little bit of money right now, you'll probably want to stay with the 2012. Because like, at first glance, you can't really tell the difference. Like, right here, you can because of the light. Like, this is obviously the 2012 pair with the shinier looking leather, but when it comes to wearing them, you're not gonna be walking around with a ring light over your feet. Like, I know if I go outside and wear these right now, people are definitely gonna ask me, like, yo, is that the 2024 pair? Because, you know what I'm saying? Like, they look similar enough on first glance. Those of you who are more detail-oriented and care about those little things, definitely sell that 2012 pair and get these. That's what I'm gonna do. Quality's much better, like I said. I never realized how ass the leather was on the 2012 release until I got these. This super stiff, shiny shit got nothing on this new leather. This... <laughs> I don't want to gas it because like it's not perfect like you know i mentioned before how some parts are a little wrinkly but like the feel on it is just so nice it really exposes how trash this leather is i do however prefer the shape on the 2012 pair over the way it is on these like i was saying earlier i don't know why they put this deep ass banana like cut on them because it's not like the ogs were like that like the ogs are actually cut more like these so yeah i don't know but it doesn't look bad when they're on feet so i'm not really worried about it what i really like about these is the laces they had slim nines laces down over the years in such a sneaky way that i almost forgot how thick they used to make them. this brings me that 2002 release nostalgia and i like that now the color thing I feel like the Olive 9s get more brown every time they retro. Now, I never had the OG, and they're so rare now, it's even hard to find pairs online to compare in pictures. Also, because they're so old and some of them have been through who knows what, a good amount of the pairs that are still in existence have discolored, so it's kind of hard to get a good idea. But if you dig enough, you'll be able to find a good assortment of pictures of them. And you can see that the color on the OG wasn't like this. It definitely wasn't this brown. It was more like Olive. Now, I had the 2002 pair, and I remember them being Olive. I wish I still had them to compare in hand, but here's a picture of an 02 pair right here. See how they look more like green? Than these do the next retro was this 2012 release you can see right here the suede is much more brown than it was on the o2 pair then after that is these where they're even more brown surprisingly it's not bothering me quite as much as something like that usually does i mean it still does bother me but i'm gonna still cop these usually something like that will make me not even want a pair so i don't know why these kind of get the pass i don't know if i just got used to it having these for so long but realistically no matter how much better i like the olive on the older pairs it's not like i could go get a wearable pair of 2002 or og olives and i don't know if it's really worth a soul swap so maybe that's it I don't know, but yeah. These are cool. Not perfect, but not bad. I want to say that they're going to sell out, but at the same time, I could kind of see them sitting. It's because Olive Nines are like a low-key fire shoe that are kind of popular, but still not like appreciated by everyone. With the way things have been selling lately and the avalanche of releases that we're going to get over the next couple of months into 2025, I could definitely see a lot of people overlooking these. Like if they would have released these when shit was a little bit more dry, I'd have a little bit more confidence in them selling out for sure, but we'll see what they do. But either way, uh, they shouldn't be hard to get for the most part. If they are, 
for some reason like if they sell out on sneakers they would definitely restock at some of the retailers no need to run to goat or StockX or anywhere or anybody like that right after release time if they sell out on sneakers that is a huge waste of money i know some resellers will be able to profit off of these initially but if you don't have the right clientele for that i don't think it's worth the risk so just leave these for those of us who want them to wear if this video is helpful on formal in any way i really appreciate if you give it a thumbs up if you're interested in more early reviews like this or any other sneaker related content please do us both a favor and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already once you're subscribed make sure you tap that little bell icon next to the subscribe button and select all that way when i put a new video out you get notified and you won't miss out on anything thank you all for watching everybody please stay safe and healthy out there and i'll see you next time